Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. Welcome back to the Foundation Paper Piecing Series 2, this time for June. And of course, we know around that time of year, those first berries of the season. I'm excited to go with my family up to Green Bluff. We pick berries every year, make our shortbread. Um, it's so much fun, so I couldn't resist. And sometimes the berries are really ripe and they're super red. Sometimes they're pink and they're the next ones coming up. And so this is a combination of the not quite ripe berries and the ones that are ready to be picked right now. This is a customer favorite. We actually kicked it off last year, as you know, with our first foundation paper piecing series. And I, as I've sold before, was not, I was almost reluctant to do it because I thought not that many people really love foundation paper piecing. And I was so wrong about that. And I'm excited that people love doing this. And this is absolutely beginner friendly. And I love that. I remember being an early quilter and pretty much convinced everything in the quilting world was beyond my skills. I didn't have time to take classes. And for a lot of years, I sat on the sidelines and not realizing this is not rocket science. This is super fun, very approachable. If you are just seeing this for the first time, you don't even know what this is, you can certainly head back to even our first series if you wish. Um, kits are available for that as well as thread sets. But this is again the second series. For both of those series in the very first video, which was April of our first series and April for this series as well, I took that deep dive into how does all of this work? What is all this stuff on the table? Do I really need that? And I show you the process. So be sure to check that out. Kits are the way to go. If you want to have all these darling fabrics that I choose in the middle of the night when I'm doing all my design work, just get those kits. Everything that you needed is included, except a little bit of fusible fleece or batting. That's the only thing you'll need to pick up. And then the thread set. That's the thread set that we use to top stitch all of that. It's kind of like a quilting process. I cover that on those longer tutorials, so be sure to check that out. For today, we're just going to do a little bit of review of the kind of working with smaller pieces. This is the part we're going to make together today. And... As you know, one of the reasons you love these kits is most of the time with foundation paper piecing, you have to go get your own foundation paper, go Xerox that, all the copies you need. Most of the time, that's not there for you. You have to literally go and do that. We've included the foundation papers as well as stickers. Notice how all of my fabrics are stickered. As I look at my instructions, they're guiding me into, here's your fabric. Identify that fabric, get your stickers ready, get a nice blade in the rotary cutter, nice and clean, and make those cuts. Sticker as you cut. Cut, sticker, cut, sticker, and complete that until there's no stickers left. Then, notice how I have all of my stickers in a row. D1, D2, all the way through D8. Each section is for D. Other sections, which we've done ahead of time, Sections A, section B, and C. So let's focus on this one. This was the one that we found to be not difficult, but it's just smaller pieces. Anytime we're doing smaller pieces, we just have to be that much more precise. So as we're used to doing, we're always gonna start off that very first piece where we're gluing to the back that first piece only because there's nothing to hold it on. There's nothing to sew it on with. So we just take a quick peek. I put just a little bit of a stripe of, a, of glue there and put that into position. Just like this, right? We're always going to be, and sometimes you can just hold it up to the light and see that. You can use a light box as well. That will absolutely reveal that. I don't have room on the set with me for a light box. If I did, I'd absolutely be having that light box so I didn't have to keep holding that up to the light. Now from the front side, we can see that D1's in position. D2 is next, our white fabric here. And remember, just as just a refresher course, that we're always looking for at least a quarter of an inch all the way around the shape that's coming up next. So in this case, this is D2. How do we get to D2? The line right here, this is our add a quarter ruler. 
This is a very important notion that is expressly made for foundation paper piecing. That's its mission. So I'm folding back directly on that line, confirming I'm on that line. I check it one more time. I could fold it over just a little bit more. Yep, I'm on that line. Then there's the ridge right there that we just make sure we're right in position. So we trim TSP. If you've been watching our series, you already know what that means. It is not a teaspoon for baking, although I love the idea. I love my cookies. <laughs> I love baking. TSP, trim, sew, press. So we've done the first part. The T is for trim. The next part will be sewing. But first, we have to make sure our fabric is positioned in the right location. How do we do that? Well, we know that we're going to sew this here and flip that. The key is to, once again, hold this up to the light if you need to, to say, did I cover that shape? Am I all the way out here? And I'm gonna move my shape down. I'm definitely gonna move that down. So when I flip this over and I look here, I can absolutely know I've covered that. So let's just go do that. We're gonna do just a few rounds of this. This is just a refresher. I know what that's like to step away from a type of craft where it's not intuitive and I have to kind of reorient myself, definitely foundation paper piecing is like that. So that's why I like to just offer a refresher now and again throughout the series, just that way you don't have to necessarily go back to the very beginning video. So I'm just gonna double check that I didn't shift that. There we go. That's the right spot right there. Once you have that spot, you're going to flip that over and pin in place. Remember that we're always going to start a little bit before the line, so directly on the line and end. Because this is very precise, we're sewing with it really sharp, Microtech size 7010 from Schmatz Super Affordable. One package is gonna last you a long time, long time. That's what's in here and it's gonna help perforate the paper and we're going to want that because later on we do remove the paper. Start a little bit further down. There we go. Also got a shortened stitch length of a 1.5. For our next step here, we get that iron heating up to a full hot. You've got a choice and we've covered this before that you can either simply press that back finger press and use the roll and press if you want. If, you are, if your iron is not right by your sewing machine, I know that's kind of that way sometimes, depending on your configuration, your sewing room. Sometimes that's more convenient. If you're like, no, I'm an iron person. I want to iron that down. Doesn't matter. You choose your favorite way to, to get that down so that that is cleanly out of the way. Now, what's next? Two. So we trim, we sewed, we press. What's next? TSP again. You keep doing TSP. One is here, two is here. Fold back. And it's okay to tear the paper just a little bit. Remember how we sewed past it? It's okay to pull that back. The ridge goes down. Make sure that's good and locked in. And let's trim. Piece number three. So we know that that fabric, once it's in place, needs to cover that. And that will easily do that. Easily. Still, it never hurts to kind of simulate that in position. Hold that up and verify just one more time. If you ever missed it, You'd want to make sure you knew that before you trimmed the next step. I have done that before. And when I went to press it, and I did press it, before I trimmed, I'm like, oh, I missed that. You need to seam rip and go back. So it's not the end of the world, but just check that before you trim. Same choice. We can finger press and use our roll and press or iron 
choose your favorite. Trim, sew, press. Now what? Over here, same story. Here, roll back, D4, D5, all the way through. That is how we arrive at this place. And notice I trim directly on that line. Now, this was easy. This was easy to trim that one because it's just straight lines. I'm gonna show you some of the other shapes and I wanna call your attention to some of the nuances of, of this that could easily be missed. Let's look at specifically right there. So let's look at right here, that little jog, which seems insignificant, but is not. Sometimes I have been guilty of cutting these things out just a little bit too quick and didn't notice a little bit of a jog. It matters in final assembly. So when you get ready to trim up your shapes, all of these are put together. And if, again, if this is your first time watching foundation paper piecing, that's obviously not enough information for you. Be sure to go back to those first videos where I do. You're gonna need a snack, something to drink, take a break, because we're there a long time. My goal being that you're successful in having fun. This is just a refresher for all of you that already are very familiar with this process and I'm emphasizing the importance of trimming directly, directly on those lines. And what I'm, uh, that, th that notching, being intentional is really gonna help you in that final assembly and set you up for success, which is what we all want. Notice on the creative grid ruler, we have the dashed line right here. That's the quarter inch. If you're putting that dashed line directly on this line and all of a sudden the two lines become one, you're at the right spot. Because see how I'm laying this here now and I can see this line and that line? I'm not at the right spot, not yet. And now, now I am. It looks as one. That's how you're going to know you're absolutely at the perfect spot. If you line up that way every time, you will be successful every time. So take that extra time to just line up ever so perfectly. All right, I'm gonna keep trimming you get the idea that I, I wait. See how look above, I don't know if you can see that. That is not it, not it, now. That's the spot. All right, I will keep trimming. And then when I come back, we'll do the final assembly. We're gonna talk about some pinning, just being very intentional. We'll be adding our seam guide to help us get a very accurate quarter inch seam allowance. So we have our pieces A and B and C and D. You're like, okay, how's that work? So we'll flip everything over and you'll see the site picture we've created. And of course, the first thing we need to do is sew A to B. So we get everything lined up. Don't you love that notching? That very precise cutting you just did, that's where it's coming into play. It is so fantastic. And you know what I just realized? Because of the lines on this, I don't even need a seam guide because I'm sewing on those lines. There's no other place to be. So we don't need a seam guide. So that is fantastic. So let's go over and start sewing our pieces together. Okay, now you can imagine, we're not going to wanna press these seams one side or the other. We need to distribute that bulk as best we can. Notice we're leaving the paper on through assembly and removing at the end. That's where you might wanna recruit a friend. The tweezers come in so handy. Most of the pieces are not difficult to remove just with your fingers, but every now and again, you get something in the corner you just can't get it and it's bugging you. <laughs> That's me. And I grab those tweezers because I'm like, I gotta have it out just for my own mind. 
It's not going to hurt anything having a little bit of paper in there, but just because. It's bugging me. Okay. Now that we've done this portion, we'll assemble in the corner. And again, this is where new people to sewing and creating can shine. You're, you don't have to find a quarter of an inch, sew on the line. And that's why I say this is absolutely beginner friendly. Maybe you learn how to foundation paper a piece even before you learn, you know, other types of more advanced quilting. It's easy to do and fun. Once again, pressing that open. Look at that, just how precise. I think that's the thing I love most. I like precision and foundation paper piecing assures that. You know, when I'm quilting traditionally, the results are up to me. How well did I press? Did I use sizing, a fresh blade? Did I sew a quarter inch seam allowance consistently? How was my pressing? There's a lot of more variables. This is, well, you can see the process. It is just, if you follow these simple disciplines, you have amazing results every single time. Now for the top, same story. We're simply pinning in the corner and that corner pinning and sewing on the line. Really the, 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 the main thing you just need to make sure of is that your fabric is truly stacked top to bottom and something's not scooted in behind, not scooted down. And it looks like everything is nice and stacked. I'm going to pin that. And let's go sew that final. We have to sew that final seam, of course. We want to see our block. Open up that last seam. And then we're gonna take a look at our block. Look how cute that is, oh my goodness. Make another pink one, make another red one. And that's really just when that removal process begins. Again, if you have any problems, like that's a great example. Right there in that corner, hard to get to. That's where these tweezers are just like another pair of hands. Now, warning, these are extremely sharp. I have put these through my fabric before by getting kind of too aggressive with this. So just be mindful that they are extremely sharp. But how nice to have that extra kind of pair of hands they're invaluable, so be sure to pick those up. Really, I can't think of a foundation project I've done that I didn't need those at some point. So as you know, make all four of your blocks. The sashing cornerstone comes into play. We get our batting or fusible fleece, uh, iron to the back of that, even put our backing on, and then we quilt it all the way through to give it a nice embossed look, again, with that four-piece thread set. So you can imagine, I've been very busy. I have already designed foundation paper piecing series two for July. I can't wait to show you that one. <laughs> Each one is my favorite, I think. Each one is just, I'm really having a lot of fun and I hope you are too. And if you still have a friend that's a holdout, let them know, guess what? Uh, plan a sewing date, show them how fun and easy it is. Maybe, maybe get two kits, let them try it. And I know they're going to be hooked and they're going to love foundation paper piecing just as much as you and I do. Thank you for giving me part of your day today. Subscribe if you haven't already done that. And I'll see you next month as we continue our series.